And the University Heights police are surrounding a home where two people died from a suspected fentanyl overdose four days ago. The standoff comes after reports of a home invasion, and we uh, start with our Jamie Chambers live at the scene with what we're now learning. Jamie. Hey Andrew, there's a, a lot of SWAT officers out here. The call came in at 8.30 this morning, now directed at now an infamous house on Louisiana. A lot of people know this house from Thursday where four people were found in an overdose state. Two passed away, another two were revived, and now SWAT officers have surrounded that same house. To take a, we've got a couple of pictures we can show you from all over in this area. SWAT officers have really worked through this. At 8.30 this morning, investigators say that there was a home invasion robbery in progress. They responded to that and were able to detain at least two people. We saw them uh, handcuff these two folks, take pictures of them, then take them into custody. There's another person that's inside that home, according to investigators, they believe is armed and they are trying to get that person out as best they can. We did speak to the San Diego Police Department a little while ago, and this is what Lieutenant Adam Sharkey had to say. It's also believed that there's at least one more suspect inside the house, and at that point, officers tried to negotiate that person out of the house. Um, that's been unsuccessful for the last couple of hours, so now officers from the Special Weapons and Tactics Team, as well as the Emergency Negotiations Team, are on scene to try and de-escalate the situation and resolve it peacefully. And this is just a really difficult time for this, especially the neighborhood, the family members that were involved in the Thursday incident, and they're out here as well. Uh, people trying to understand what this has to do with the Thursday overdose incident. Was there any connection to this? Uh, investigators here in the San Diego Police Department have really moved into a new tactical format where they take their time. They really don't want to rush this. They're doing everything they can to bring this to a, a peaceful conclusion. We've seen their tactic change. They'll take hours. They'll take over 24 hours in some instances to give the people the time they need to uh, give up and surrender peacefully. We've seen that in the last few months so it's certainly something that they're prepared for they've brought out their bear cats they brought out all their tactical gear the robots their drones everything is here in place and they're trying to make that communication with that person that's inside that's holed up in that house uh, once again they believed one man is in that home armed uh, a robbery suspect and they're doing everything they can to try to bring this to a peaceful conclusion that's the very latest from the corner of louisiana and mead I'm Jamie Chambers, and we'll send it back to you in the studio. Hi, we understand federal agents on scene there as well. Jamie Chambers, uh, thank you so much. And let's talk about, as a result of everything that's going on there where Jamie is, uh, a lot of streets are closed off. Megan's tracking the impact on the roads out there. Yeah, hi, Andrew. So our crews on the scene are telling us that police have Louisiana from Mead to El Cajon blocked off, and the neighboring streets right around that roundabout where they do have the police staging are also going to be closed. So just keep that in mind if you are in the neighborhood there. Major thoroughfares such as Texas Street and El Cajon Boulevard do remain open, but because those streets are still open, we're seeing a little bit of congestion on Texas Street in both directions. Police asking to avoid the area as best you can and drive safe this afternoon. We'll keep you updated if there are any more closures and when those current closures are lifted.